and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, nationally and internationally known as The Money Lady. And as always, I'm delighted to be a part of your world for the next hour where I interview fascinating people doing amazing things, share with you financial tips if appropriate, and try to serve as a guide if you want to look at it like that in helping you to make good, sound financial decisions. Today I have as my guest for the next hour a powerhouse in the Southern Ohio marketplace, and that is, his name is Ron Todd. He owns an insurance brokerage agency. He is an African-American uh, superstar, as I call them. And uh, I'm just delighted to be able to have some of his time today to share with you a little bit about the world of insurance. I know you don't want to hear it, but you know what? Either you're going to pay for it or the insurance company's going to pay for it. It just is the way it is. It's called risk management. That's why you have car insurance, because either you're going to pay for the wreck or the car insur or the insurance company is going to pay. This is why you have fire insurance on your home. Either you're going to pay it if the house burns down or the insurance company. It's always cheaper to have the insurance company do it. So insurance is foundational and basic, not just in the United States, but all over the world, tracing its history back hundreds and hundreds of years, risk management. So we're going to be talking about that topic today, particularly as it relates to uh, what uh, Mr. Todd does. And um, maybe you'll get some good ideas and some good topics, hence, and make some decisions in your own life. If you don't have insurance, you should get it. If you're looking at changing the type of insurance, that's what he does. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to get right into the, the meat of the show. It's a good, good show. Just sit down, take some pen, pen, pen and paper out and enjoy yourself. How are you? It's a pleasure. Oh, I watch, your, I watch your show all the time. I'm so and, glad. And I'm just happy to be here with you. Well, I'm happy to have you here. I just think this is so wonderful. You're such a a powerful man. Well, well, thank you so much. I, and I like that. You like that? Well, oh, yeah, yeah. I like alpha males. I don't like weak people. Oh, no, I can't, I can't be. I can't be weak. Uh -uh. My parents didn't raise me. My thank grandparents you. didn't raise me. To be no, weak. no, you know, no. We have to go out here and go after it. Make it happen. And, and get it. Exactly. Nobody owes me anything. Okay. Okay. So, I like that. So let, let's go get it. Let's. I'm with you. And, and, I'm with and you. Everything's possible, with God. So we know that. All things. All things. Unlimited. Unlimited. Come on. Come on, Michelle. <laughs> Tell me. Talk to me about it. <laughs> oh, I believe. I, I have no doubt. I, I look at my past and the people I have networked with and, and my children and family and so much. And I have to give him all the credit. Oh, it's amen. an awesome story. A amen. amen. It is. We just got to believe in Let him do his thing. Oh, he's going to do his thing. And we thing. step back. And, 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 and we either going to step back or we're going to get run over. Exactly. You know, as I tell folks, choose your manner of death. But you're not going to run his ship. No, 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 no. I mean, you can fight, but you're not going to run his no, ship. No, no, no. So where do we want to begin? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Let my viewers know who you are who are not familiar with you. Oh, it'll be great, great. I, I'm from originally from Dayton, Ohio. Okay. I uh, grew up in Dayton. Uh, uh, started networking in my early teens. Huh. I was a, a ball boy for the University of Dayton basketball team. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize what I was really doing at the time. I wrote a letter to... Uh, to the head coach, and I started learning how to network, how to develop relationships then. Okay. And from then, I, I graduated from Belmont High School uh, and uh, played football at Bowling Green State University, and, mm -hmm. and I, I graduated from Ohio Dominican University. Okay. Uh, so that was a blessing, the promise I made to my parents and my grandparents. I will graduate, so I, I, I did it. And, Wonderful. Uh, uh, come from third generation entrepreneurship family. Really? Uh, my, my company is called SEEP, LLC. S E E P L L C. Mm -hmm. The S stands for Silas Ishman, my grandfather. The E, one E stands for Edward Clyde Todd. The other E stands for Edgy Wright. And the P stands for Prilly Z Wright. Uh, so they were entrepreneurs, uh, and they're my guardian angels watching over me. So it's instilled in me to go out here and get my own. Uh, but now I'm taking it to a whole different level now. This is interesting. So you come from a a uh, family of entrepreneurs, generationally. Yes, yes. Do you know what types of industries or businesses yes, were yes. they in? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Silas Ishman was a construction. He moved here from U uh, uh, Utah, Alabama, from uh, Bluefield, West Virginia, as a coal miner. Mm -hmm. Coming to Dayton, he knew the opportunities were great here in the 50s. 
he built his first house in Crown Point, and he built another house. Uh, so he did things by his hands and, and was a great, uh, was a very intelligent guy. My grandma said he's so smart, he knew fractions. <laughs> and, uh, 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 and my uh, grandfather, Prillyzy, right, he was a uh, electrical contractor here in the city of Dayton. Really? Yes, he was an electrician, one man. And then my dad, uh, uh, Ronald Todd, took over that business. So it's in me. My grandfather would tell me all the time, you know, get your books, but if you want to make some money, work for yourself. And I was like kind of confused at the time, but uh -huh. now I understand now what he really meant. Right, yeah. right. Because, you know, back in that day, education was so important. Yes. For uh, African Americans. Yes. It yes. was coming out of slavery and, and not being even allowed to read and write. Education and book learning, as they called it for me, book learning, right. get your book learning, yeah. was important. Yes. But the business piece was also very, very important as well. Oh, mo most definitely. I mean, the thing is, too, is that the opportunities that young folks have today. Isn't that amazing? Th there should not be any excuses, Michelle, why folks, especially in the African-American community, are not doing well. We, it's our fault we're not doing that. The opportunities mm -hmm. are here. No one owes you anything. And a lot of times... And if they owe you, they're not paying. Exactly. I'm, I'm serious. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They owe, you're exactly. not getting any money. So I've had my own insurance agency uh, brokers for, for 21 years. 21 yes, years. Yes, yes. And then in the meantime, I also uh, was the uh, president owner of my own sports agency. So okay. I, I was a NFL contract advisor for 16 years, so I had both businesses going at the same time. Okay. So uh, I negotiated over 50 NFL contracts, got to see how all that worked behind the scenes. And what I realized is this. Tell me. Okay, this is interesting. Tell me. Uh, oh, Michelle. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I got to tell you, right? Okay. What happens is, is that the young folk, those young men who get those contracts. Right. As my grandma said, their pocketbooks change, but the mindset stays the same. And wow. that's why we have the problems. That's why they lose their money, because they still have the same mentality they had where they, where they grew up as. And a lot of that's the poverty mentality. That's the real truth. So let me ask you this, because I've had opportunities to work with um, uh, these superstars, right. and I've not been interested because of that mindset. Mm -hmm. Because my whole thing is if you bring that into the world of wealth, you're going to be poor in the world of wealth. Your money will leave. Right. Why do you feel that that is such a problem? What can you do to make a change? Do you, I mean, I'm just asking, would you take a lump sum of their money and put it in an annuity or put it into a guaranteed account that they can't touch for like 20 years? Can you do that type of stuff? Well, no, you, I didn't. When I was an agent, I was very careful with that because you have other issues coming from, from a legal standpoint. Oh, okay. I didn't so, know. So basically, you know, what I did was try to empower my clients. Okay. And, and the first thing what we would do is that we would say, look, you don't know what a mutual fund is, a stock fund is, a checking account, savings account, Goodness interest rate, gracious. debt ratio. They didn't because understand is that the folks who make it on that level, their, their job, they're busy trying to get better in their sports, football, basketball, okay. baseball. Try, okay. So they're not to get exposed to other things that will help them out. So I said this, this, you made this money with your sweat and brow. Mm -hmm. Put the money in the bank at first so you understand. I don't care about interest rate. Right. I care if it's paying 1%. You got to save. <laughs> See, the problem, especially with kids today, they sing so much. I know. All the, most of the kids who play, say, NFL, they have known at least two and a half people that didn't live to 18 because oh. of the lifestyle that's going on out there. Okay. okay? So the thing is, too, is that they live for today, they don't live for tomorrow. So you got to make sure and say, look, the person who makes money, they always plan. And then those folks understand it by having a game plan. So we've worked on having a game plan for life. Because right. I, I tell you, the issue is this, and I tell my godson this, I'm not worrying about you when you're playing football. I'm more concerned when you're done playing football. And that's the thing. So I took a different approach to that. Wasn't popular, money lady, to mm -hmm. be honest to you, mm -hmm. because that's people in my profession want to have control over those young men. Wow. I did not want to have control. I empowered them so my competition would say, well, Ron Todd doesn't know. Yes, I do know. Uh -huh. I mean, because the, the thing is, too, most of my competition, they're third, fourth generation who have money. It's right. possibly second. Right. But the thing is, too, is that you can't act like a person. If you're the first generation making money, you cannot 
act like a person who's fourth generation. Right. There's no way. You don't have a history. Exactly. You got to build a foundation. Right, up. right, and, right. And, and, but the key is, is change the mindset. You got to understand is that if you want to live the way you live when you're playing football, I mean, you got to save your money. And I would think so, because when are you out of the game? When, well, the, wh average, what? the average time now is 3.4 years. 3.4 years to pop that money, and then you're done. Yeah. So do they go on to businesses or endorsing or, well, I, I mean, mean the, you know, what do they typically the, do? The thing is, too, is that they're not qualified to do a business yet. Oh, my but God, because they put all their time into learning how, how a could, craft. How, how could, exactly. I got it. So that's the problem. So you expect a guy, a guy can have, a person can have a lot of money. Say I have a million dollars for a business. Right. But they can look the part. Right. But they don't have the mentality, right. Michelle, to make sure to maintain that. So I suggest to my athletes, look, there are entrepreneurship classes you can take. Yes. There are things you can do to get better. But the thing is, too, is that you got to learn from someone. See, if a person who played football, they've been playing football their whole life, most likely. Mm -hmm. But they don't know people who run businesses. So I tell them got it. to go in and work, find someone that can mentor you. Mm -hmm. Someone in the car dealership, a, a right. restaurant franchise, right, right. real estate. While you're playing, you are a mm -hmm. Call them on the phone, say, look, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so, I play for the Chicago Bears. Right. I want to get involved in real estate. Can I follow you around so I can learn this mm -hmm. before you jump into it? Right. The problem is they trust the wrong people. But that happens to most people. But I was going to say, that's not necessarily uh, related to their, their being sports figures. Most people trust the wrong people. You know how they trust the wrong people? Because the people, the wrong people, are going to tell them what they want They want to hear. hear. You're right. And you, I know. You I've, know. Been, I've been telling them what, what they don't want to hear, and they're mad all the time. But, but it's right. the truth. It's the truth. But see, we're not trying to be popular. We're going to try to be, do what's right. <laughs> we're going to do what's right. That's why you're on this show. Hey, We're going to do on this show. Thank you. Now tell me, you are now president of a very major organization. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I'm the I'm the uh, the local president for the Southwest Ohio Northern Kentucky National African American Insurance Association. Okay. And uh, I took over last year, last June, and it's been phenomenal because I tell you this now. I had a uh, when I took on this opportunity. Uh huh. I wanted to make a difference. Yes. I want to change because the insurance industry is a wide a variety of business. Yes, it is. And there's, it's more than just selling. There's so many jobs in that. Mm -hmm. But it's all about exposure, developing the relationship. So what I've done as president, I have had joint meetings with the National Association of Financial Insurance Advisors, yes. which is a majority organization. Pull in, get the exposure, help folks out. Be able to network because the thing is too the jobs and insurance business is very closed it's all it, about it, who you know it really and so it what, is and what i want what i did say look i'm going to bring everybody together yes so the folks in the national association finance insurance advisory can meet the folks in nia to work it out also what i'm doing is developing all especially in cincinnati and dayton all the the the, uh, the association of black accountants okay lawyers all that together for right. a joint meeting. So because we got to be able to network together. And also, too, sometimes you have to understand what you actually do. This is all about relationships. Right, here. right. And, and we got to develop that. So I said, look, because everybody doesn't, you know, God's blessed me able to bring folks together. Yes, well, that's what you do. That's what I do. And that's, that's what do. I'm working in. That's what too. your gift. Oh, man, thank you. That's it, a is. It's a, it is. It is. It is. To be able to facilitate dialogue between a diversity of groups yes. so that they can begin to recognize that we have more in common than not exactly. is where we are today. Exactly. exactly. If we're going to get through this economic period, we've got to learn what the Chinese taught me, which is collaboration. you got to collaborate, even if they're your enemy. If they will see you to an end that is good and favorable for you and them, then get with it. Well, this is chess, not check. Ah, you like that? <laughs> I love it. This is chestnut checkers. Amen. I have to remember that. That is good. You can have that. I thank you. I'll, I'll post it in you my. Post I'm gonna post it in my Facebook today please, when please. I get back. This is chestnut checkers. checkers. Right. I, I love that. It's all about. I tell you, uh, Michelle. It's all about strategy. And uh, uh, I go to Aileron 
which is uh, started by Clay Mathilde, okay. who founded Iams Pet Foods. And, and, and they talk about uh, working on your business mm -hmm. instead of working in, in your, your business. business. Right. You have to strategize. But how do you strategize? Get around people doing that you want to do. Right. You can't sit around and be by yourself and say you're going to, you got to get around people uh, doing what you're doing. And it says in the Bible, too, you know, that you have to be around people who are doing what you want to do because you don't. You prepare. You will. You will. That is a challenge uh, today because so many in business, and I've been in business for 38 years now, long time, and you can find yourself out the loop, you know. You can find yourself going for long periods of time and really not interfacing with a lot of people outside of your clients and and the companies that you're doing business with. And that's a problem. So how do you propose changing that? Well, the thing is, too, it's all about mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, most people say, well, I'm not doing good in my business. I don't want to be around nobody. And then, too, especially with us, we don't want nobody knowing what we're doing. Ah. So, but I've learned as I got older, uh -huh. being transparent is being empowering. Oh, my gosh. And so when you can talk about, well, I went through this, uh -huh. or this is going on here. Right. People want to really help you. Right, right. Most people don't want, people get things confused, Michelle, is that they think, well, this person ain't going to help me. Well, don't talk to that person. Exactly. Go to, go go to, to somebody th that will hear you. Yeah. I'm with you on and that. The thing is, too, is that I get, even when I'm down, I help somebody else out, right. I get uplifted. Right. And that's to me that, the key. And, that, and you know what? That is not only the key, but I was just reading an article that if people are going through any kind of depression, that the best way to get out of it is to begin to pour into somebody else, helping somebody else out of their situation and meeting their needs. And my grandma always told me, you reap what you sow. You do. So if you good sow and bad. Good, yeah, you, good and bad. Good and bad. Good hey. seeds, wonderful crop. Yes. Bad seeds, famine. We, and that's famine. What, and, and see, as business owners, entrepreneurs, we got to get back to each other. The person who's supposedly successful knows, only one knows what that person who's going through what they're going through. And, and that's Amazing. the thing is, too, is that if you want to be an entrepreneur and have your own business, then hang around other entrepreneurs. Right. You can't. Right. You can't hang around people who work for the government. Right, right. Who work for this corporation right. works for this corporation. You got to be around iron sharpest iron. Yes. And if you don't get around folks, you'll be dull as a butter knife. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> dull as a butter knife. That's good. You like that? That's good. That's good. So you started out your company t over 20 years ago. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And did you have any specific type of insurance that you uh, specialize yes. in? Y yes. What I did was I started. Let me tell you the story how I started. Okay. I started with a hundred dollars in my pocket. Hundred dollars. I went down I, before I even passed my test because it, it took you know take the state test. Oh yeah. For insurance, I, I was working with another broker, and I promised myself I'm gonna pass this test this time. 1992, never forget it. I rented a car to go down to Cincinnati to take the test, and I said, Lord, please let me pass this test. Yes. I passed it with a 70. Okay. That next week, I went downtown. To uh, met with a gentleman. Uh huh. Got an office downtown with no phone. I had a pager. Never okay. Four nine six fifty four hundred five one three. At that time, fifty uh -huh. And uh, bought it from the Strayhorn family, Cincinnati. Right, yeah. right, right. And uh, hundred square feet, Michelle. A hundred square, square feet. feet hundred dollars a month. That's a twenty by. What is that? Twenty. It was small. Ten, ten by, t ten, by ten. ten by ten. Ten by ten. Whoa. And I, it was uh, it was, my office was three 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 West First Street, and I said Suite two forty. Okay. I, I didn't tell it was a room. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, the gentleman, the office, I use it, uh, uh, use the office next door, the attorney's office next door, uh -huh. the payphone when people would call me. Use the payphone. Pay I love it. Remember, I, I, I remember the payphone. They still have those now? I, no, no. The young people not going to do a payphone. They'll do a cricket or anything. I don't think they have payphones yeah. anywhere anymore. And so I specialize in doing uh, life insurance. Uh-huh. Uh, working at that time, I was 22, 23 years yeah, old. Yeah, you're a young boy. I was young. And uh, life insurance, uh, doing health insurance. And, mm -hmm. and what happened, I was very influenced by a gentleman named Ronald Hickson. 
hmm. who was the at that time uh, one of the directors at St. Louis Insurance Company, right downtown Cincinnati. Okay. Him and, and the Zeta Vice President John Johnston uh, gave me three cases to have some income coming in. Oh, nice. So I understood the group health insurance yes. benefits. And I did annuities and, mm -hmm. and uh, retirement planning and, and all those kind of things. And I was networking, you know, trying to meet with estate planning attorneys. Yes. That's where the bigger yes. oh, amounts yeah. were oh, at, yeah. oh, trying yeah. Trying to learn all that. Yes, so that's how right. I started. Right. That's such a wonderful story. A 10 by 10 room with a pay phone for incoming calls and uh, first three cases from some big boys. Mm -hmm. It's nice to have friends. Yes. Uh, you know, the thing is, yes. too, well, it's all about relationships. I, I, I'm, because I'm so I Because I was never, ever met at that time. It was called uh, ABIB, Association of Black Insurance Professionals. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Ron Hickson was the president here of the local chapter. Okay. And that's how I met. Because I went to a meeting and met. That's how I developed a relationship with St. Louis Insurance Company. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So over the years, did you ever... Um, uh, specialize or work with sports figures beyond just uh, as an agent? Yeah, I did some work with some athletes on, on some insurance products, and I do a lot more work with, on the disability side now. Oh, do you? Yes, 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 disability, because that, that's very important because if they uh, something happens to them, they get hurt and can't play again, Oh, my happen? goodness. I thought their companies took care of them. No. It depends. Now, uh, some the NBA, the top guys get that paid for okay. by, by the teams. But the NFL, the players I dealt with, no. You got to take care of yourself. So you can get hurt on the field mm -hmm. and it's your red wagon? It's your red wagon. Ooh. So it's, it's time to grow up. Ooh. Yes, time to Ooh. grow up. Time to grow up. You're getting hit on the field. Right. I mean, that's another human being coming at you. Yes. Fast. 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 Yes. Full body weight. Yes. Boom. You're done. You're done. And you're done. Oh, man. So if you don't protect yourself, then you're going to have problems. And, I, and, I, and it's all about, you know, I, I tell people all the time, you know, I was a, uh, I played uh, offensive lineman at Bowling Green, and the thing, I was all protection. Mm -hmm. So my job is to protect you. So I protect athletes. I protect lawyers. I protect doctors. I protect executives. Protection. Insurance. It works together, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Insurance does afford you protection. Yes, yes. Yes. So give me some of your situations. Give me some cases that our viewers can relate to um, on disability. On disability. Sure. Yeah, let's do yeah, that. Let's do quick. that. Let's, okay. do, let's, okay. let's work with a, a person who's a uh, has own, it's a construction worker. Okay. Owns his own construction company. Okay. He owns his own construction, construction company. company. Okay. Uh, if that person is not working, there's no income coming in. Absolutely not. So what we do is uh, uh, we'll do application. Okay. And the maximum they can get is 60% of their salary per year. Now, if they are a typical small business, how do you how do you uh, determine their salary? Well, it's off their, their tax break. Okay, so you look at their tax records, yes. and that's how you determine how much money they get. Exactly. exactly. Okay, and the disability would have to be for a specific period of time or at the time of the occurrence. Exactly how does yeah, that what, work? Yeah, what it is is that the uh, which is a great situation, all they do have to submit is something, they're disabled, mm -hmm. they can't do their job, they submit the paperwork. Okay. Uh, the doctor submit the paperwork to the insurance company and they make a determination on when this action happened and when the disability can start, they start getting paid. Question, is that disability taxable? No. So that's tax-free income? Yeah, tax yeah, because they're already paid already. Exactly, in, they paid in the pool. Yeah, so they, you know, they tax already because okay. they're, they're giving tax for you know, the money. Right, it's after-tax money yes. that they're using to purchase this policy. Exactly. Is this a product that's available that that most people should get? Almost definitely because you protect your income. Yes. Especially if you're an entrepreneur, if you're not working. Oh, you're done. You're not eating, and then also a person say owns a construction company mm -hmm. can can buy what is called a business overhead expense policy, which means that all their expenses will be paid for the, the light bill, mm -hmm. all their employees, okay, all those things, they can get that too. It's called business overhead expense disability insurance. So all their bills are paid too. So including their employees? Their employees. That would be separate. They, okay. It won't pay them. It will pay the employees. So it will be two separate policies. Got you. It will be the, the one for themselves. For themselves and, and then, then the other. Other, yes. Now my question is, I don't want to go deep, but then I do want to go deep. Go because deep. this is important. Go deep. So 
if a person has a corporation, right. which if he owned a construction company, he right. should. He should. Because he needs protection in case something goes awry. Exactly. So how does, is that a tax deductible expense for the corporation? Can no. they pay the premium? Well, it, that great thing. If the corporation is paying the premium, it's a tax deduction for the corporation. Okay. But the corporation has to pay it. Okay. Now, if he becomes disabled and the corporation's been paying it, then is that income still tax-free for him? Do you know? You have to talk to, I'm not a CPA. Okay. All so right. I well, that's sure. a good answer. Uh, but, that's but a good answer. The thing is, too, is this, though, is that my understanding how that works, mm -hmm. it's going to be taxed somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Absolutely. You know, there's no free lunch. Right. So if the corporation's paying for it, you're probably going to have to pay taxes on that exactly. money. But if you paid for it, then you wouldn't. Exactly. That makes sense. Makes sense. That makes yeah. absolutely sense. Exactly. So uh, the situation you gave me with a business owner that would have construction, or really any business owner, business owner. any form of, it doesn't have to be work-related disability. Mm -hmm. They could uh, be uh, uh, boating and have an accident exactly. and not be able to do their job. Exactly, yeah, because usually if it's a work-related thing, workers' compensation. Right, right, but <laughs> not as much money, no, would you say? No, not as much as money, but yeah. still workers' comp okay. covers that. Well, I certainly understand the logic of that as far as people getting disabilities. So why is it that they don't buy it? Why isn't that product? Uh, well, first thing is they say they can't afford it. Okay. That's a big thing. Or they don't know they can get it. Uh, you know, the insurance business, there are not a lot of people out there doing insurance no more. Um, I've been doing it for 36 years, and I'm telling you, it's, it's, the ranks are thin. What happened? Everybody quit? The average they age took their 50, money and left. Well, the average age is 54 and a half. Now. Are you serious? Well, the thing is, too, that the, the models, the bigger companies, the crews, the management yeah. things, they've cut back on training now. Okay. And so, and, too, you know, when I started business, it was straight commission. Right. And so kids today who come out of school, it's like, I'm not going to do straight commission. Right. I thought the same thing, but that's the best thing ever happened to me. Oh, I, 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 I you control your own. Destiny. I control my own destiny. Yeah. I, to pay me commission. Yes, yes. I'm so, fine with that. Uh, a lot of folks now don't want to do it, so the there are not a lot of people like us out there okay. helping and advocating for the business owner. Okay. So that's the problem. So first thing is they can't pay for it. They think they can't. It's too, okay. too expensive, or no one sitting down talking to them. They don't have the right advisor mm -hmm. that's being there to look at all the different things. So. Mm. Do you believe that when a person, such as a business owner, is looking at his team of people, he should have an insurance specialist yes. or a financial advisor? Which he, one? He can have both. Right. See, a lot of people get caught up in things. Uh, uh, the insurance, you need specialties on your team. Right. So you have an a, a accountant. Mm -hmm. You have an attorney that understands business, the things you're dealing with. Right. You have... Uh, Financial planner. Mm -hmm. you have he specializes in business owners. Exactly. Right. Different. Right. Not a general financial. Not a general. Planner. Because mm -hmm. if you go, if something's wrong with your heart, you go to a heart doctor, mm -hmm. not to a mm -hmm. general practitioner. Right. Excellent. So okay. you got to have a team of people. A lot of folks, when you are a business owner, they understand that you're the quarterback, but you got your board of advisors around you that help you out. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'm learned over the years. You should have a board of advisors, too. You should. And not folks that you're paying, like your CPA, your accountant, mm -hmm, or lawyer, mm -hmm. but other folks. Right. That's why the networking comes in. So you meet someone who's doing well, whatever. You can say, look, I know I'm in this business, but you're in this business. Can I talk to you? Can you be sitting on right. my board of advisors? And most folks who are successful want to talk. They want to, to share. I agree. That's the thing. I agree. That's the I thing. I agree. So you gotta you got to shift your mindset. Shift it shift to understand to be a business owner that is so um so interesting this past week the wall street journal on their cover talked about the the, the rate of entrepreneurship was falling rapidly in this country people are not starting their own businesses uh they're afraid they don't want to take the risk uh they did a, f a full story on on the changing world of entrepreneurship what do you think about that you know i people i think looking at it, in the wrong way. Uh huh. With the new health care reform act, most folks now, everybody can get insurance now. People. That's amazing. Okay, so think about this. I'm now. thinking. Think about this. Okay, I'm thinking. Most people try to go get a job 
and work for themselves, for someone else to get benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, January 2014, you can get your insurance in. There's no health questions now. Are you serious? No health questions. There are no health questions. No health questions. So a person, let me just play this out, mm -hmm. because corporations, as you know, um, slice and dice. Mm -hmm. It got rid of a whole lot of people. They're mm -hmm. still slicing and dicing, maxing out production. These people are between 55 and 64. In times past, at 65, you got Medicare, so you're covered. But that, that donut hole, so to speak, of people that have nothing, they will now be able to get coverage? Yes, they will be able to get covered. That's the new, the new Health Care Reform Act. How are they going to pay for this? Well, it depends on. Now, the, and, and now legislation, they're still working with this okay. now. Okay. It's only June the 11th. Or 12th I got right you. Now, okay? I got you. So I got you. Still Here we to work go. It out. There we go. Okay. okay. But as of today, Yes. Everybody will be able to get health insurance. Okay. No health questions. No health, health questions. questions. God. The government now is saying they're trying to decide what's going to be the poverty line now. It's going to go up now. So if so, if you reach that poverty level, mm -hmm. okay, and it's going to go up. We don't know exactly what's going to go up to yet, okay, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to get help from the government. They can't afford to get it. So the government, let me play this out because I'm a numbers lady. The government's going to raise the threshold for poverty. Yes. So if you are scrimping along because you're in that little donut hole between 50 and 64, you may very well be classified as poverty. Right. Will business owners be able to be classified as impoverished the, as well? It depends how much money they're making. So their tax returns. Exactly. Got you. Got you. So it's going to be a... This is going to be an interesting. Awesome. So this, this is, is the best. This is, whoa. This is the best time to be an entrepreneur. But no one's looking at that money. Like, I'm like, this is the best time now. The world's your oyster. Go so for it. So at the point you've got health care coverage. Yes. Then all you have holding you back is what? Yourself. Yourself. Fear is real, Ron. But you know what, though? Fear is real. But, you know. People do not. Coming out of corporate and private sector, they come out battered and bruised and paranoid and fearful. Well, the thing is, too, is that a lot of times now, people are comfortable being uncomfortable. Oh, now that's, now, you, now you're going to get into the world of mental illness. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about <laughs> mental but illness. But no, it's not, you know what, Marty, it's not mental illness, it's the truth. What do you but the, but the, but Look, Can't nobody be comfortable being uncomfortable okay, unless something's I'm, 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 I'm wrong a, I'm upstairs. Get, Michelle, well, I'm okay, a, okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you. Okay. I'm going to tell you something. Who wants to be in prison? Okay. Look, okay. The situation, let's give you, let's, I'm going to do, a, let's do a, 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 a dog. Okay? okay. A dog has his paw on the nail. Yes. And he's whoa, whoa, howling, howling, howling. Okay. okay. So in our minds, we're saying, just take, take your foot off the nail. But when he takes his foot off the nail, the unexpected is going to happen. He don't know what's, he or she or the dog doesn't know what's going to happen. So they keep their foot on their nail because they know the surrounding. They know exactly what's going to happen. People don't like the unknown. Okay. They like to be comfortable being uncomfortable well you know what and I and I, I I understand the analogy here but I'm I guess I've just been an entrepreneur for too many years 36 years yeah. is a long time that's why you're special I just like are you kidding me if I'm gonna be in prison give me my own keys but you're different I don't know you're different Most I don't know most people like to be, but, but they don't, because people, they, they have no problem. They, they say, well, I went into the lottery. Well, how many times have you had? I, I mean, the lottery. You, right. You most likely get struck by lightning, right? Right, right. You are so, not going to hit the lottery. So the thing save is. Save your dollars. Save your dollars. Save your dollars. Save your dollars. Yeah. Stop being a fool. But it's not comfortable saving your dollars. Because they want to. Want it now. Want it now. Deferred gratification is yeah. important. They want it now. So that's the thing is too is that they folks are comfortably uncomfortable going to apply for a job. Or well these people don't like me here or 
it's racism over there. Don't deal with that. I'm like, get out the get way. Get out the get out the way. Start, Start your own stuff. Exactly. Do your own stuff. Find out what your passion is. My last guest talked about that. Your passion. Awesome. Find out what makes your world. Passion. passion. Why I get up every morning because I'm passionate about helping someone else out. That's what Solving I love. Solving their problem. That's what I love about that business. Solving and, their problem. Right. That's a, you know, yes, we, we in the business make money. But the best feeling I get when someone says, thank you, Ron. You helped me. I didn't know I can get this done like this. That's amazing. Insurance is so foundational, though, to everything. Everything. Let's talk about final expenses since most people, again, that little donut hole of baby boomers who lost their group insurance when they got let go, so they don't have group insurance anymore, and they don't have anything. What do you recommend? This is the thing is, too, is that uh, that's why the business, there's no one, we don't have insurance folks no more. God. They have their car insurance person, which is great. Okay. Their house insurance, but the government makes you get that. Yeah, those are mandated. The thing is, too, is this, is that life insurance is because you buy that because you love somebody. Yes. You don't want nobody, as my grandma say, passing a hat to bury you. But people are still passing the hat. Because I know they are. And I'm like, would you stop it? The, the, there are so many companies after the day that will work with you. I have a company right now. Don't even ask any help questions. They do not ask do any not help questions. Do not ask any help questions. questions. But you got to live two years to be able to get it. But two okay. years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No help questions. No help questions. How are their premiums? Reasonable. Okay. And the thing is, too, I tell folks all the time, is that you pay for what you, you want. Yeah. If it's important to you, pay for it. But don't try to go out your budget, but it's important because when something happens to you, there it is. There it is. You're gone. Right. You're gone. Right. But it's a beautiful thing here. Folks know, but they don't. It's like people don't think they're going. People know they're going to die. Ah, uh, it's not important with. until it happens to you. And then when it happens to you, you're gone. So somebody else is stuck with your stuff. Yeah, basic. It's about planning. Right. Planning. Making right. sure that stuff is in order. You owe it to the people that you love that's in order. You do, Ron. But a lot of folks, though, we get caught up into stuff that doesn't mean anything, my lady. Yeah, yeah. Stuff uh. that, or worrying about somebody else's business versus mm -hmm. taking care of your own. Right, which I tell folks, why don't you, why don't you do good to take care of you? Yes. That, that, that'll take a lot of time. Take care of your stuff. It don't take that much time. Yeah. Take care of yourself. But, I mean, deal with your own reality. Here. Right, right. But, but, but final expense insurance, you get anywhere between five to $25,000 worth of insurance. Do you? Yes. That's all you need to be buried. Exactly. And then I talk to folks all the time, too. I take it a step further. You know, insurance not only for death, it's all for the living, too. Exactly. You also get cash value, too. Huh. Yes. On the final expense mm -hmm. stuff? Really? If they live long enough, yes. Right. You can. Yes, yes. You can. Now, how do you avoid Medicaid issues? Well. Somebody else owns the policy. Exactly. Got it. Got it. You, you got it. There's ways to be creative. That's why you need an advisor like You're yourself. Yeah, and me right, to right, be able right, to, right. To, to go in and show you how to get things done. Right. Some that folk, is so important. Yeah, yeah. So, folk, I mean, I have no problem with the internet. That's a great tool. People are buying things off. But who are you going to talk to, though? That's why we're so valuable, right, Michelle. Right. Well, I tell folks you can do internet if you want, but when your stuff goes wacko, talk to the computer. Talk to. You don't can't. don't call me. No. Call the computer. No, no, no. See if you can get that worked out. I'm serious. I, I know folks that because see, in my practice, I'm not just giving you quotes. Right. You're advising. I'm advising. Right. Let's plan. Let's. A I'm asking a question before I throw some at you. Right. Now, if you want, this all you want to do is get twenty five thousand. That's fine. I'm not going to run from that because I'm still helping you. Yeah. But my job is to show you the whole full picture. Mm -hmm. You're Particularly advising. today, because I'm telling you, the biggest issue for me, and it's big, is grandparents raising their grandchildren, mm -hmm. young people getting killed. I mean, numbers of young people mm -hmm. from everything. Mm -hmm. 
and the funerals where they're passing the hat because the grandparents don't, many of them are widow women. They have not taken out insurance on their grandchildren or even their children because we're in a delayed period now. People are not thinking the way they did in times past where they would carry a little bit of insurance. But today we've got young people that have no insurance, not thinking about insurance, and grandparents wondering how this can happen. Do you have an answer for that? Yes, I do. I mean, okay. the, the thing is, too, is that um, that's why they need folks like ourselves. Okay. To come out there and to help them, to educate. Um, there's a problem because we're moving so fast. Society yes, is yes. moving so fast, and we're not taking care of the basics. Mm-hmm. So the, the, there should be something there, and, 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 and it's not the, the kid's fault. Is that we're not teaching the kids mm -hmm. because we're so busy worrying about surviving and how we're going to get past today, today, mm -hmm. and the next day. Mm -hmm. But we got to, like you said, get back to basics though and have that. See, in the old days, insurance person would come around and collect money. Yeah, my great my great grandmother uh, paid her little three dollars, and he came by. They don't have that no more because it, it's, it's because of safety and, mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm, the way society's mm -hmm, changed. Mm -hmm. You don't go around collecting right. anymore. You don't go around even collecting for the newspaper no more. You know, have you seen some? I have around? not actually. I haven't seen See a newspaper boy in years. Yeah. That's gone the wayside. Gone way Safety issue. So, the, so mm. with that, it's our job. It's our role to make sure that we tell everybody we see about that, pass them out about it, exposing folks to mm -hmm. it. I mean, this is this is a, a, a something we got to do. You know that it is. It is something, it's something we, we have to do. do. We, we, we have do. to get out there and get it. And I and I. Uh, but how do you get people to? Uh, now I know in my markets, people know me for thirty years as the money lady. Mm -hmm. I branded it years ago. An and excellent job with that. Too, I, right? Yeah, but it wasn't me. A Marge Parr. I, I, I mean, she gave me that name, and and it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. But to constantly have to uh, tell the same thing, and then. What I'm finding, if you use these social venues, the, they'll ask you, you tell them, and then they don't want to act on it. Or they have, say, I want to talk to somebody about it. And I'm like, why did you even <laughs> Facebook me if you want to think about it? Or they'll tell you, well, I don't really need that. The big thing now with young people is I got gold. And I spoke to that last night. I said, stop talking about gold. Mm -hmm. Go, you need to take your gold and buy yourself a cow or a chicken <laughs> or a farm with some animals. Come on now. Because you're going to need food. Right, right, right. Because if you really are into survival mode, gold is not going to help you mm -hmm. eat. Exactly. And the response was like, ah, oh, here she goes again. And I'm like, come on now, a little bit of common sense. Why don't you just go back to basics, get your foundation in place, get the kind of insurance you want and need for your children, get an attorney to do your will, get things in order, and then you can talk about exotic things. Don't talk to me about Iraqi dinars and, and gold and all these wacko currencies. I'm like, are you serious? I spent 30 years trying to educate you and all you can talk to me about is crazy currency and gold and you don't even have any money saved and you're still trying to be all that. What do you think about that? Well, the thing is, too, is that, you know, especially with the younger generation. Oh, my goodness. They're, they're caught up into something that's not real. Uh, this Internet, which is it's amazing to me, you know, young folks don't go to the library no more, okay? Nobody reads books anymore, but they can get on Twitter or they get on Facebook and they go on whatever. But you got to understand, Young folks today, they want something now. But I tell you something, I worked at football camp uh, uh, this past weekend. Oh, really? Yeah, it was the free football camp, 28 years in Martin Bell's football camp. And I went out there and just coached, okay. had some fun. And what I realized is that kids are still the same kids they were years ago. Okay. They want tough love. I think we need to be tougher on them. And we've got to say, look, this is okay, but you got to get the basics first. You know, when I first started driving a car, I didn't get a new car at first. I, I didn't to, get a car at all. My dad was like, you're going to earn it. Same way. I, I didn't want a car. I got my license, but I knew it was the cost. Yeah. Gas, yeah, yeah. And insurance yeah. and a car payment. Yeah. And your parents weren't bankrolling that. No. 
But I think t today we're, we're a little soft. Mm -hmm. We accept mediocrity today. We, we, you know, well, Johnny, you know, he stays in the house all the time. He's not in trouble. But what's Johnny doing? Nothing. Nothing. He's doing, Nothing. We, we got to set the bar. I was watching uh, uh, Richard Dick Parsons uh, on uh, TV. Uh -huh. and, uh, and he's the head of uh, AOL. Uh, black guy. Oh, great guy. really? And he says that we have not set the bar high enough. It's still, it's low. Mm. We got to set the bar higher for our kids. We, if they're going to meet competition, you know what? This is what really disturbs me. And I lived in China, and I can say this. The Chinese are a no-joke culture. Their kids are in school seven days a week. Seven days a week. And they don't have, uh, they don't allow their children to talk back to the teachers or their whole thing is you don't know enough to tell anybody anything and you need to shut up, listen, and pass your national exams or else you don't have a future. It changed my whole world. Those kids are ferocious. But it's not just the Chinese ch children. You look at children in Eastern Europe that have suffered and how tight they are in terms of the goals, the bar, which is I have to do this because I have no future. And I think we need to tighten up our game with our kids. I tell the kids all the time, somebody loves you. Yes. Mama, daddy, grandma, foster parents, somebody loves you. So you owe it to them to do something in society, to be great. Yes, greatness. You gotta, you right. gotta strive for that. You want, right. you want to make them proud. The reason why that you know I've done these TV interviews, newspaper clippings, get these awards, and not for me, it's for my family, for my mm -hmm. little cousins, for my step, my daughter. I mean, it's for them to see, look, something to be proud of. Right. And, and the thing is today is that people, they, they, it's not about you. It's not about me. No. It's about it. It's not about me. No, no, it is not. And these folks, the society says it's a me, me. It's not I'm like, me. no, it isn't. Not. You have a legacy. Speaking of legacy, you're dealing with your dad. Yes. And that's a long-term care thing. And we're all dealing with aging and parents and grandparents. How are you handling that? It's, 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 it's different. Okay. Because that's my dad, you know, uh, my family calls me Ronnie. Okay. So I'm little Ronnie, but now I got to step the road up now. Yeah. To make sure everything's together. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad was an entrepreneur for 40 plus years. Gee. And, and it's, it's been tough, but I, I, I see the toughness in my father, you know. Uh, to be it, a businessman for that many years, yeah. he wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. And my, my dad... It's still tough now. Mm -hmm. You know, he got his health challenges, and mm -hmm. the dad's still fighting. That, that, and I told my dad the other day, I said, Dad, you make me keep going. And mm. my dad always say, hang in there. Wow. Hang in there. Yeah. Hang in there. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a thing, too, that in this business, we talk about certain things. Mm -hmm. I can talk to someone else about it. Mm -hmm. But when it hits home. It's home. Woo! I know. So I've learned now how to take myself out of it from an emotional standpoint. Right, right, and, and do it. To, and, and be able to get everything right. needed to be done. Well, I tell you what, I totally believe that if you're 50, you need to be getting long-term care insurance because it's going to come. It's going to come. It's and gonna when come. it comes, I just, don't, I just don't think most people are prepared right. for what that looks like when you don't have money because it's a totally different animal when you're out here at the behest of the government or VA or whomever trying to get help, particularly our generation, because, Ron, there's 78 million of us. I mean, the United States is not prepared for all of us getting old. I'm the, one of the leads, you know. I'm in my 60s, and I'm a baby boomer, but you're right there. You're right there, and, and it's coming. And the question is, Who's going to take care of us? What's the role of insurance in that? Well, the thing is, too, like you said, the, uh, when I first got in business in 92, yes. I mean, we, I went to a seminar on long-term care insurance. Yeah. I had, you know, what that meant. Right. Because it wasn't relevant. It wasn't relevant. Uh -uh. Today, I understand how important it is yeah. to, to, to have long-term care When you insurance. see your father, and like I said, I look at my, my family and Alzheimer, and um, I tell people, you are not prepared 
to ante up the kind of money that is going to be required to take care of your parents. It's just not. It's just too expensive, too expensive. So you need your insurance for that reason, well, if, 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 if nothing else. So do you have any, um, in the remaining time that we have, do you have any uh, uh, points that people you want to leave with the people today? And also I want them, you, to, you to give them a telephone number so that they can call you and get their lives. Oh, that's, that's nice. Thank okay, you. no, please do. Uh, well, the first thing is, it's all about you know, finding people that you can trust. Yes. Finding people you can trust. Okay. That can help you to plan for the future. Right. Second thing is, is that, don't worry about the cost factor. Mm -hmm. When you sit down with that person you can trust, that person should be able to work in your budget. Right. Whatever that looks Whatever, like. But it's like, you know, like when you go to the car, you don't go and buy the most expensive car. You buy something you can afford. Right. But the job as a person you trust, that trusted advisor, is to make sure that you know what everything's going on. Mm -hmm. So you might have to shift something you're doing now. Right. To prepare for the future. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's good advice. And, okay. And, and the thing is too is this is that the, the the war is your oyster, and you can do anything in the world you want to do, but you put your mind to it. To, your mind I to totally it. agree. And then a lot of times too, if you got to if you got to transform your mind, and how you transfer your mind, you hang around people who are doing the things you want to do. Good, good, good advice. Give us your phone number. Uh, Nine three seven, four two two. 7750. Again, 937 422 7750. And you are SEAP LLC. LLC Insurance Broker, Insur which means you represent a number of different carriers rather than just one. Right, which right. means you find a carrier that will work best for your client. Exactly. I'm an independent broker. I, you know, in the insurance business, you have the captivated. Yeah, mm -hmm. State Farm, American General, um, all state. Yeah, they yeah. work for the company. Right. As an independent broker. You work for the client. I work for the client. I love that. Okay, viewers, wasn't that great? He's a, he's a powerhouse. I like this man. I hope you learned some things. I hope you'll give him a call. Cincinnati, Dayton, doesn't matter. Give him a call. He is a friendly competitor. And I'm glad he's in my space. He's a wonderful man. So signing off on today's segment of The Power of Money, I'm your host, Michelle Graves, wishing you, as always, a wonderful day, and God bless you. You take care. Goodbye.